Tom here from Lawrence Systems, and it is September 21st, 2021, and VoIP MS has been, well, attacked very heavily over the last couple of days. How heavily? I don't know. I only have external information. I have no inside information to VoIP MS. I actually did reach out to them for comment, as did Bleeping Computer, who has an article about the attack as well, and they're busy. I get it. Now, we all wish that their Twitter was more detailed other than we're working on it because, well, I'm directly affected by this. I have talked about VoIP MS on my channel before, which is also why I wanted to address it here. The problem really is my phones don't ring. And probably if you're watching this, your phones aren't ringing either, depending if it's now or in the future at some point in time. And this is a real critical piece of infrastructure. It's, uh, well, on fire. And the answers of we're working on it aren't adequate, but I also want to give a little perspective. I'm not here to defend that answer. I'm here to explain a little bit of how these things work and when companies are in crisis. You have the deeply technical people working to put some type of mitigation in place, and they probably don't want to be bothered by the people who tweet and say things like, what's the status update? Can you give me a very deeply technical thing so all the people that are commenting on Twitter can have a better answer? And they're like, leave me alone. I'm trying to solve a problem because, well, if we don't solve this problem, then people's phones don't ring. So there's a little bit going on back and forth. And we'll talk a little bit that later in the video uh, where you can read a little bit more uh, and actually have a discussion on this. And it's over by Rob Thomas, who has a Reddit post. We'll get to that in a moment. But the answer a lot of people were tagging me in, messaging me and everything else are, why aren't they using Cloudflare, Tom? That would just solve all these things. And I think it's because Cloudflare is such a well-known web proxy content delivery network that offers some DDoS mitigation. But this is where people have a misunderstanding of how that type of system works for any of these type of systems. And let's start there with a fundamental. If you have to plan the capacity of your company, let's say we're VoIP MS and we need to have servers in many different regions to provide quality voice services. I can predict based on marketing, based on how many people sign up, how many servers I need to put in any particular region to provide a quality of service to my clients. What is way harder to predict is the workload needed when you have a threat actor who wants to extort you for money and create a denial of service and say, pay my fees, or I will keep knocking your service offline. The problem is, is where the asymmetrical uh, cost to denial someone versus defending it. It actually is not incredibly expensive to take these large botnets that are for rent, if you will. This is something that's gone on for a long time. This is not something new. It's been around for years and years. And the scale and scope until these botnets get broken, well, they become cheap services companies can offer. Companies would, a uh, wrong way to say it, maybe threat actors, criminal enterprises, however you want to title them, but they run it like a business where you, they allow you to rent time on their DDoS servers. Anyone who's worked in the gaming community is extremely aware of DDoS for hire to knock your competitor's gaming server off so more people use your gaming server. That's actually where I would say it's been really popular. Doing it at the scale they're doing it to attack a company like VoIP MS, scaling it up not to knock a gaming server off but to disrupt specifically voice services this was actually just done a few weeks ago in the uk as well i have no idea if it's exactly the same uh, threat actors doing this but nonetheless it's very disruptive to lose your phone service therefore it's a pretty good target in terms of if i was going to go where the money's at these companies will probably be the more likely ones to pay up. VoIP MS has chose not to be the one to pay up. They're trying to defend against it. And planning for this out into the future is difficult. As I said, you can capacity plan based on client information. It's way harder to plan because you can only put a plan as big as you think you're going to be attacked. You could put in thousands of servers to help mitigate a larger attack. But at some point that comes into the cost of your service going up and up to pay for all the different servers that you have to have up and running to have an attack thwarted that's a potential attack. Because voice is an interactive service. So unlike delivering a website through a CDN where a tool like Cloudflare would work very well, you have to figure out how to scale out when it comes to all the SIP servers that have to take requests that are coming in for phone calls, process them, and then service those. And when the type of attack you're being attacked with is a, we're trying to register fake SIP accounts and didn't, you know, putting bad username, bad passwords, the servers have to go in, look at the incoming requests, process it, do the full normal handshake and uh, connection over the internet, 
then realize it's a bad username and password and say, I'm sorry, I can't let you connect. And then the next one comes in and the next one comes in. And at some point, these get overloaded. The scale and scope of the servers, you can just keep adding more and more of them to keep doing it. But then the botnet people go crank it up. I only rented a botnet that would spray the information at this rate. Let's spray it more and more and more. And uh, it's an arms race at this point of can they afford to do it and can they afford to spin up or can they spin up servers fast enough to absorb the botnet at the same rate that the botnet grows then what the botnet appears to be doing right now is instead of attacking all the servers it just kind of round robins and attacks different ones so you don't know when your server is going to go offline that you're attached to and when it's going to come back online and that's not an easy thing to mitigate against either they can then focus all of that during the attack phase to one area or another so they take out the new york servers then they go back and take out the chicago servers then they rotate over and take out servers on another region so this is not something as easy as people think of just put some type of content delivery network in front of it now at least one part people were correct about and this is over at security trails is yes they didn't have cloudflare for dns they did have their dns set up over at internap and steadfast so they had two different providers they had four dns servers and Four, three of them were with InterNAP and one of them was at Steadfast. This is something you want to do when you set up DNS servers. You keep them regionally different. So if one fails or another fails um, or another one is on another provider. So, you know, for DNS, that's fine. But they were able to knock these DNS servers off. So they migrated them over to Cloudflare here, which Cloudflare being more robust and having lots of servers and being a huge company that does come at an expense to set this up, they are now having them do the DNS. Now let's talk about the subdomains of which there are 254 and where that is. This is where an understanding, and once again, this is just external information, me looking this up, you can see how spread out across many different locations that this is hosted. So we have New York 3 open at Internet. We have Montreal at iWeb. We have Phoenix 2 at Omni Networks and so on and so forth. So you'll see lots of different ones. They have a few of them. Uh, Wiki, uh, that's their Wiki, but Ohio here, Ohio.VoipMS is over at Amazon, SoftLayer, etc. So there's all these different things. And this is, by the way, free to view over at Security Trails. And there's more on here. Uh, you can see that their infrastructure is all spread out. Now, this brings us over to this Reddit post by xrobau, also known as Rob Thomas on Twitter, who is the founder of FreePBX. So we're going to see Rob knows quite a bit about voice services, delivering them, and understands the protocols and the complexities of this. He has a lot of technical write-up here and some of the same things that are linked over in the Bleeping Computer article. He also has his speculative, because he does not work for VoIPMS, what they are probably doing to help mitigate this attack. So this is a speculative write-up here, but it comes with a lot of technical knowledge. And there's plenty of discussion for those of you that want to discuss all the different things going back and forth about this this service about how this works and ways to mitigate this. I thought this was a pretty good write-up here. He talks about them moving all their IP addresses of their POPs. This seems to be confirmed by tweeting people should be using and trusting DNS again, asking their hosting provider for more control over their networks because banning the IPs is definitely something they want to do, but that's a lot of IPs to ban and there's a lot of things because even if you ban it and you know are blocking those requests, that's still a lot of requests coming at your individual devices that still have to be mitigated. So it's still a problem. So upstream to the providers and blocking at a different levels is part of the goal to stop this attack. Uh, beefing up hardware, putting a cluster of SIP proxies in front of everything, which can horizontally scale and absorb this level for attack. There's a lot of details in here. So like I said, I'll leave a link to this Reddit post. Now, some final overall thoughts on this entire process. It's a mess. This is something that is kind of a nightmare for any type of person starting up a SaaS service. You want to stop start up some type of service that can't just be easily proxied because it's a flat and static website, which is pretty much any type of interactive or hosted type of service. Voice is obviously an easy target. It's such a critical piece of infrastructure that if you attack it, it seems there's a likelihood of those companies paying. When they don't pay, uh, hopefully it tells the threat actors that they should find something better to do, but they probably won't and its attack will continue for a while and maybe scale up. I don't really know what the end result is. In the meantime, we're kind of stuck without phones ringing and services not working properly. Like I said, it's obviously a, a high value target to those doing this type of attack. There's no easy answers, no easy solution to this. I just wanted to offer some perspective, my thoughts on it, if you will. Uh, so I can just reply this video to all the DMs, tweets, tags, and other social media posts that I've been uh, messaged about and 
yeah, I'm suffering through it as well. We, we figure out how we deal with this uh, kind of as an ongoing basis, and hopefully all these problems get resolved. And maybe you're watching in the future going, oh, I remember when that was a thing, and it's not a thing anymore because it was resolved with X, Y, and Z, and a solution was proposed and implemented that we just didn't see at the time of the attack. So I hope the uh, you're watching this in the future when everything's great. And if you're watching it very recently now, um, I feel your pain with you. It sucks. Uh, that's all I really got to say about this. And uh, thanks. All the links down below, and uh, for more in-depth discussion, head over to my forums. And thank you for making it to the end of this video. If you enjoyed this content, please give it a thumbs up. If you'd like to see more content from this channel, hit the subscribe button and the bell icon. To hire a share project, head over to lawrencesystems.com and click on the Hire Us button right at the top. To help this channel out in other ways, there's a Join button here for YouTube and a Patreon page where your support is greatly appreciated. For deals, discounts, and offers, check out our affiliate links in the descriptions of all of our videos, including a link to our shirt store where we have a wide variety of shirts and new designs come out, well, randomly, so check back frequently. And finally, our forums. Forums.lawrencesystems.com is where you can have a more in-depth discussion about this video and other tech topics covered on this channel. Thank you again, and we look forward to hearing from you. In the meantime, check out some of our other videos.